this video I'm going to show a small example of how the ICFD solver works in LS Dyna. I'm going to set up a simple but yet very famous case, the 2D floor on the cylinder. So in order to do that, the first thing one needs to do is to define the geometry. Uh, for this video I'm going to use LS Prepost. In order, LS Prepost has several tools in order to build geometries. Here, if you go in curve here, you can define points, lines and then several other more complex shapes, but for our case, since our geometry is going to be pretty simple, we're going to use the 2D sketcher, which you can see right here. So here in the 2D sketcher, there are several basic tools that are available. For example, you can do points, which I'm going to do right now, okay. in order to define the points of my domain. Then I'm going to link them together. And then finally, I'm going to set up the cylinder in the middle. So now if I exit the 2D sketcher, I see that those curves have appeared in the main window. Now, I've done my geometry right now. Uh, the next step would be to set up the mesh. In order to set up the mesh, the easiest way to do is to first generate some element beams out of those curves. So if I go in mesh element gen, here, element generation by beam and then by curve, if I select a curve, I can very simply an and assign a mesh size to it. I can simply generate a new part. So this is going to be part number one. It's going to be our inflow. Part number two is going to be our outflow. Part number three is going to be our far field. And then part number four is going to be our cylinder. For our cylinder, I'd like to use a slightly finer mesh. since this is going to be our region of interest. So now there. Okay, I can deselect those curves in order to see a little bit better my parts. So here we go, I got part number one, part number two, number three and number four. So now I've, I've meshed my surfaces. Do I need to mesh the volume? No, the ICFD solver, one of the very neat features is that it automatically takes care of that. It automatically generates uh, the volume mesher which can be uh, quite a time server in, in cases where we have complex geometries. So one last thing I need to do before saving this mesh is I need to make sure that there are no gaps, no holes, that this is airtight. And most importantly, I need also to make sure that there are no duplicate nodes left. So in order to do that, I go in Element Tool and go in Dup Node and then remove duplicate nodes which might have been left during the construction of the mesh. There we go. So now this mesh is ready to use, which I can now save it. Okay, under the name mesh.k, for example. Okay, so now my mesh is saved. So if I exit this prepost by open and open my mesh file in text mode, when, what I will see is that here Dyna has automatically generated those part keywords. Well, those, since we're dealing with the ICFD solver, you need to remove those. And then, those beam elements, well, we need to tell the ICFD solver, those are not beam elements, those are elements ready for you to use, so the keyword that's associated to that is called mesh surface element. It keeps the same format, but you just change the name. See, it's very convenient to do it in a text editor. It is possible to do it directly in as prepost if you go in mesh and add multiple solver mesh, but I prefer to just go in text mode. I find it safer and in general more convenient. And our nodes are going to be mesh surface node. And there we go. Our mesh file is now ready to use. The next step will be to define our keywords. So here I got the finished keyword file. I'm just going to briefly go over the keywords uh, that have been defined. So for example, same as classic Dyna, we got in but instead of parts, we got ICFD parts. ID 1, 2, 3 and 4, to which we're going to associate a section and a material ID. So our section here is an ICFD section. You see, you see, you just need to define the ID and that's it. There's nothing else asso associated to it. So this keyword is useless for the moment, but it's been left there for consistency purposes. And maybe in the future, the ICFD solver will make use of it. Here, the material, in the material keyword, the first flag is the ID. The second flag, we are also going to leave it at one. 
it's, it's a, it tells us that we're going to deal with a fully incompressible fluid. And then here, the, those two other flags, yeah, the density and the viscosity, those are the only things you need to know about your fluid in order to completely define it. Since this is an incompressible solver, we don't need to set up any equation of state, so uh, it simplifies the problem a lot. So here we are going to use a density of 1 and a viscosity of 0 0.01. And one last thing about these parts is that we also need to tell the solver, well, okay, those surface parts have a material of so and such and such, so I know their properties, but what about those nodes that I'm going to generate next in the middle? in the volume. Well, to those nodes you also need to assign them a material property. So here I'm going to set up a new ID and assign again section 1 material 1 and then tell the solver, okay, this volume that is going to have this fluid in it is going to consist, its boundaries are going to be one part number 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Now the next step will be to define our boundary conditions. So, same as in any classic CFD code, the very the easiest way to do so is to define a prescribed velocity at the inflow, which I'm going to do through the keyword ICFD boundary prescribed velocity, uh, a prescribed pressure at the outflow, which is going to be the keyword ICFD boundary prescribed pressure, and a, um, a slip or a free slip boundary condition for our far field, which means that I'm only going to constrain the velocity in the normal direction. It's going to be the keyword ICFD boundary free slip and then a, a wall also known as non-slip boundary condition uh, which is going to be our cylinder. The keyword is simply called ICFD boundary non-slip. So a few words about the prescribed velocity keyword. So here, well, you all, as, as always, you all, always specify the part ID, the surface part ID. The second flag is the degree of freedom. One is X. And the third flag is the type uh, of velocity condition you want to impose, one being a linear velocity condition, which is what we need he here, and 10 uh, is our load curve that's going to define how this velocity is going to behave through time. So here we go associated a load curve ID 10 to it, so if you go here 10, uh, this means that I've set up a constant velocity value of 1 through time. And then in the y direction, here degree of freedom 2, so y, uh, I'm imposing a zero velocity and at the outflow I'm also imposing a zero pressure. Same thing as with classic CFD problems or codes, we often work with using an operating pressure which means that we use a reference pressure of zero. Uh, then a few about the last, about the next keywords here, you see this comes from the database for keyword family which basically triggers all the outputs, the numerical values. Uh, if I put here number 4, this means that I want the drag and lift forces that are being applied on my cylinder. Um, I want them output in ASCII format. Then here, this, this keyword here determines the level of output, the level of details I want um, on my terminal window. So if I put in 3, that means that I want, I want a lot of things. Uh, I want the solver to tell me a lot of, to give me a lot of information regarding convergence, uh, time step and so on. Uh, then of course uh, the field plot output frequency. Then I need to tell the solver well move through time. So here this is my end time of 100 seconds, and this here will be my time step of 0 0.01. Uh, if I put zero here, the solver will use a, what is called an automatic time step based on the CFL number. But remember, since this is a, an implicit solver, the CFL number is not a strong barrier, and there are many cases where you can go. Um, over it, but still have pretty good results. And then one of the last keywords is to tell the solver, well now please mesh the volume, okay, and those are the surface parts that are going to be the boundaries of this volume mesh. This keyword here is not to be confused with this one right here. This keyword, remember, told us that, okay, to those nodes that belong to this volume, specify or assign to them certain material properties. Whereas here I'm telling, okay, so mesh the volume, okay, mesh the volume and those are going to be uh, my boundary parts. It so happens that in simple cases the part IDs that consist, uh, the part, the boundary part IDs here and here happen to be the same, but there are many applications where this is not the case, for example level set or multi-phase problems. So now our problem is ready to run, and so if you leave it running and you have a 4.2 D3 plot version, well you can use the new GUI in order to post-read your results. If you go here in MSICFD, you'll see that you have this window that appears, and 
and so here you can do several things you can for example look at the mesh see this is was automatically generated by the solver you can put it in wire, mo in wire mode and so on and then of course you can ask for fringes here fluid velocity fringes as you can see it starts oscillating here we enter the classic von Karman street vortex vortexes okay and so now if I go in the ASCII menu and I want to post read my drag files well I can simply do it like that here you see that it keeps oscillating here we can say that it has reached a steady state after something like 65 seconds this is further confirmed if you look at the lift forces um, so yeah one last thing which, which we could know we could we could notice is that here you see those little p fpx that's that's of the force in the x direction so drag fpy that's the force in the y direction so lift in this case but what about this fv and F, fvx and fvy well those are my viscous forces uh, compared to my pressure forces if i try to plot them i'll see that those values uh, remain at zero. The reason being is that we did not ask the ICFD solver to set up a boundary layer mesh and the solver rather than give you garbage uh, prefers to give you a zero in those cases. If we wanted the viscous forces to be output we'd have to ask for a boundary layer mesh. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.